if in writing a play that is related to our community, our society, you find that people speak a certain way. There's an element of pecong and all this sort of thing, which comes from the oral tradition. So in, it, depending on the type of piece that you do, these are oral traditions, the elements of the oral tradition, oral tradition will influence the piece. If, 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 for instance, I would do a carnival production, which would be a representation of, uh, of, of uh, a social or political situation using the carnival characters, you will find that you would incorporate that sort of theater of the streets in that, in that carnival production. It depends on the type of production you're doing. If you're incorporating characters that are similar to the carnival characters, uh, but that, as I said before, it, it, it depends solely on the type of production you're doing. If you're doing a dramatic piece that really does not incorporate elements of carnival, you, you, you wouldn't incorporate the carnival, which is the theater of the streets. But if you're doing maybe like a musical presentation, some sort of production that deals uh, indirectly with, with characters that are represented at carnival time, certainly. Well, I used to be with uh, the Trinidad 10 Theater many years ago in the early 1980s, and uh, I was influenced a lot by the, the carnival theater we used to do every carnival time, when Helen Camps was in charge of that company. I felt, too, that uh, carnival, the emphasis on carnival is too much, well, so much on Calypso and Steel Band, and not so much on the theater, the oral tradition that is carnival. The, all the traditional carnival characters that have been dying, you don't see them very much on the streets anymore. So I thought we would, why not try and, you know, recreate that sort of element of carnival theater. So I did an adaptation of Felix Edinburgh's uh, Go to Hell, which we call To Hell With That. It was very successful. And uh, last year I did another one called Play Mass, which, which, which was a socio-political commentary. That's what the plays are, really, in a, in a very jovial manner, uh, port, uh, portraying the different carnival characters that we had see, as we would have known them before. Many old traditional carnival characters that we don't see anymore. As a writer, I, I think my style of writing reflects how Trinidadians uh, relate to each other, how they speak to each other. Uh, some of the scenes in most of my plays, you'd find that they might come off as being funny. Not, it's not that they're funny, it's just that uh, Trinidadians in general, when we attack serious issues, it's in a very jovial, light-hearted fashion. I don't think we really deal with serious matters in a classically serious way. So uh, I had, uh, for example, one of my plays opened in Barbados in December, and there's a scene in the play which appears to be quite which is serious, but it's written in a light-hearted fashion. But the Barbadians couldn't understand that concept, that ideology at all. So they played it very, very seriously. So the whole scene lost their essence. So, as I'm, so what I'm saying is that, for me, the way I write, the style in which I write would reflect uh, in depth, the sort of uh, the, the the way we relate to each other, it comes from all from the oral tradition, the Pekong sort of thing. We have a, I mean, we emulate Pekong in our everyday life. You know, that's sort of the chant well with each other, chastising each other on stage. It happens in the in the bar, in the rum shop every day, every Friday night, or that sort of thing. We do it to each other in, on the streets. You know, so we coming back to the oral tradition, we've influenced terribly by that, and I think. For asking your first question, the, 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 the writer, the dramatist producing work here is influenced by the, the elements of the oral tradition. And definitely our work will display or project the community at large at, this, at the time with, with, for which we are writing for. First of all, uh, we have to adopt a very professional attitude to our work. Um, Theatres previously over the past few years uh, has been an extracurriculum activity. So it's been deemed as an ex extracurriculum activity, not only to our peers, but also to the businessmen. They look at it in a very kind of lighthearted, you know. It's, well, it's, they're doing it for fun. There's no need to invest money. There's nothing to be had out of it. But some of us who are producers now have decided to take it seriously and, it, and work on it as a profession. This is my profession, is what I do. I used to work in the public service, but I left that, and now I, I work as a theater producer and as a playwright, and as an actor, and as a director.
and that's how I get paid. Uh, as, as I said, the first issue would be that of adopting a professional attitude. And also, we have to encourage the business sector to realize that it is a viable source of income, that uh, the business sector can, can invest in theater and uh, through it, uh, use it as advertising, whatever it is. Once the theater public has increased, we also have to increase the theater public. It will take uh, some time. It's been happening. And uh, I think in the next couple of years, whatever, it will be a viable source of income for people who want to take on the task of working in the theater professionally. There are a lot of young people out there who see it, would like to see it as an option, but because the industry isn't as big as it, it should be, or isn't that large right now, you find that the uh, people who are interested are still thinking, you know, having second thoughts about leaving their jobs and trying to get in it on a full-time basis. I think in the next few years, though, you'll find the industry increasing. It has to, because entertainment, especially in, a, in you, it has been proven during times of economic depression all over the world, enter the entertainment industry has thrived. So uh, we just have to educate the public of Trinidad and Tobago more on the aesthetics of theater and what entertainment really is. A lot of people who go to the theater and things feel entertainment is all about laughter and comedy. And uh, even though comedy is one element of entertainment, we are, I mean, Young Restless is extremely popular and it is not a comedy. You understand? So what are we saying here? You know, we're saying that if it is in Trinidad, it has to be a comedy to be appreciated. But because it's a foreign thing, we appreciate Young and Restless and Dynasty and all the other. They're all dramatic productions and they're all well received by the local public. They're not funny. You understand? So we have to realize that entertainment is not just comedy. Entertainment, uh, a, a drama could be entertaining. A tragedy could be entertaining. You understand? There are various levels of entertainment. I think once the public is educated towards the, 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 the aesthetics of theater and what entertainment really is, I think the market will become a viable one. So it means that if you're traveling abroad, for instance, you have to think about airfare, you have to think about accommodation and transportation when you get there. You have to think about a venue. You have to think about sale of tickets. You have to think about, because you are coming from a different place, whether or not it is feasible to go to another island to do a play that is not a local piece. You don't know. You have to have a study done on it. I'm not saying that the possibility of that being done is not, is not, uh, should not be thought through. But uh, because of the cost involved, I, even, I will tell you, for instance, for, to take a production from Port of Spain to San Fernando is a costly measure. That's why a lot of productions don't go south. Now, people in south feel that they're being cheated because we don't go down San Fernando. But I can tell you from experience, I have been down San Fernando already. And you go down to San Fernando and you don't get the response as you had anticipated. And you have to spend hundreds of dollars on transportation, hundreds of dollars to put back up your set, transportation for the actors, refreshment and food for the actors. You have to sell your tickets. You have to print new tickets. You have to spend more money on advertisement. And it's not worth it. You know, so it is it, one thing that maybe touring is a an, an good, a nice idea for, for greater visibility. For greater visibility, yes. But as a businessman, why must I travel from A point A to point B to lose money? You understand what I mean? So I'm not saying that these are possibilities that we must not explore. But certainly if we know we're moving from Port of Spain to San Fernando or from Trinidad to Barbados, that when we get there, we do it, it is going to be economically viable to us. And we're not just getting there because you know, we'd be taking a tour to a bus ride to San Fernando and losing money it makes no sense because it's all about economics and theater is a very expensive, very, very expensive business. The cost of production has, has skyrocketed over the past year or so simply because the cost of advertising has skyrocketed and uh, also actors' fees and professionals, trained professionals, people who work in this on a full time basis now, they're demanding larger fees. I think production companies have been organizing themselves better. I don't know how to put that any better. They have been, they have been uh, examining the elements of production management, advertising, proper publicity, and uh, getting themselves outside there to the general public. The general public was not aware of what was happening in theater generally. And uh, I think over the past three years, we'll see, 
you find production companies have been, <clears throat> the administrative qualities have been enhanced. So instead of doing it more, instead of it being like a, a extracurricular activity, as I said earlier, it's now become like a, a business. You have people in charge of different elements of the production. You have production managers and production assistants, proper secretaries, people in charge of publicity and advertising. And the campaigns have become more visible to the general public. They're more attractive to the eye. Uh, the productions themselves have become uh, in, more appealing to the general public. So more people have been coming out. And the, the discipline involved in the theater has been increased. So that trend is improving. And the, you find there's more and more production companies are realized <clears throat> coming to the fore. They too will adopt these measures of, of uh, proper administration and uh, marketing. And more and more people will be, will, the theater will become more visible. I mean, we don't have a very large theater public right now, maybe about eight or 10,000 people. But we hope that in the next year or so, it will increase, if it could increase by tenfold, I don't know. I mean, the Calypso, Calypso has a very large audience, Pan has a very large audience, and also, the foreign acts that come across here. I think people don't appreciate the fact that theater, the theater, the quality of theater is improving. It's extremely good now. You don't go, I mean, you, if you go to the central bank, for instance, you're not going to experience any kind of mediocrity. What you see at the central bank is almost exactly as a production as you would see in the United States or in Europe. But uh, because theater is an elitist thing or deemed as an elitist thing, you find that a lot of people feel that it, you know, the, the central bank is a posh thing. And I mean, those attitudes we have to get rid of it. I mean, theater or internationally, it's, it's everyone goes to the theater because theater is a part of uh, the, uh, the life of the community, the general community at large. It's just that here it, it is deemed or has been deemed as a, as a social thing, an elitist kind of thing. I think that is changing, and when that changes, you'll find the theater public increasing. More and more people become appreciative of it, and definitely the commercial aspect of it will increase, and more businessmen will become involved, and it, it will be another source of employment for a lot of people who are outside there, unemployed, and want to get involved in the entertainment industry. You know, a lot of, there are a lot of young people out there who want to get involved, if not as a, as a performer, but they're graphic artists and set designers and costume designers, a lot of people are writers, administrative people who could also get involved in because we need people to understand what goes into production. Eh? People don't understand the kind of uh, the kind of secretarial work that has to be done, the accounting and that sort of thing. And all these people, would, once the industry increases, you find that there'll be jobs in these areas for many people. I think a theater, a theatrical production, like the production of any other thing a product or whatever it is. It's a very complex thing. It starts months in advance. All right, first you choose the product you're going to sell to the, to the public, and then you have to, the administrative aspect comes in. How are you going to, how are you going to promote this to the people? How are you going to, uh, how, uh, the whole administrative aspect of it, you find that letters have to be sent out, secretaries have to type letters, uh, people have to be contacted. Uh, accounting has to take place because each cent that is spent has to be accounted for. You find budgets have to be made up, uh, set designers have to be found, the costume designers, set builders, you have to find a venue. All these things happen and they have, to be, they have to be done in a very organized fashion for the production to actually take place, to open the day that you anticipated to open and to, to be of a certain quality to encourage people to come and see it. So you find a lot of people when they go to the theater, they just see the actors on stage. But they don't know what's happening. A lot of people don't realize that you, f you see three actors on stage and you realize that there are 10 people backstage running haywire, changing costumes, ironing costumes, getting props together. There's a stage manager on a, on a public address system giving cues to the assistant stage manager or the lighting technician or the song technician. There's so many things. There's such a complicated array of things that are happening. And that's only for the production that happens on the night of each show. And each night that happens. It's very, very technically complex, but people just sit down and they watch and they see the final picture and they don't realize what is happening. Uh, apart from that, you find that there are other administrative things happening in the box office. 
money is accounted for, you know, money and tickets, and then the 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 accountability for the tickets, the 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 uh, the budgetary constraints, whether money is being overspent and stuff like that. Following up advertising, advertising is so important. We have so much competition. You find a lot of uh, there's a lot of entertainment happening, and advertising takes up not only a lot of money, but it takes up a lot of time and thought. You have to develop an advertising concept. How are you getting the people in? Uh, how many ads are you running a day? You're going to go television, radio, media. What size ads? They're following up with the radio station, the television station. Sometimes they don't play the ads. You book the ads on a certain time and a certain day and they don't come on. So you have to call and rebook and all this other thing. You know, it, it's a very, very complicated thing. Very. And it goes on for months. Uh, uh, in staging and production, we, I, we could say three, four months is about the time that you would need to stage uh, a play. You know, and it can go into longer than that because the administrative details start months in advance before even the rehearsal begins. And the rehearsal probably begins six weeks before the play opens. It's very complicated. <laughs>